Brucellosis is a disease that can be transmitted from animals to humans. It is an infectious disease and therefore it is one of the most transmitted zoonotic diseases in the world. From a scientific point of view, at the moment we know of 10 different genus types of Brucella. The particular thing is that each one has some kind of contact with man, either because it is a pet, like in the case of canines, with the Brucella canis. For people in contact with bovines, there's a Brucella abortus. For people in contact with pigs, there's a Brucella swiss, and people in contact with goats or sheep, there's a Brucella militensis. Let's say that these are the four classic types of Brucella, those that can infect a human being. There are more types found in other mammals, such as marine animals like whales, sea lions, and dolphins. In Colombia, only the Brucella abortus has been recognized. Therefore, a national program of prevention, control, and eradication of bovine brucellosis, issued by the Ministry of Agriculture and the Colombian Institute of Farming, or ICA, has a global goal to be able to certify the country as being free from brucellosis by the year 2020. However, cases of brucellosis have appeared in both canines and humans. Let's get to know some of these cases and take the necessary measures to avoid any possible contagion. Canine brucellosis is a zoonotic disease produced by a bacterium called Brucella canis. This bacteria is a very small cocobacillus with the capacity of infecting phagocytic cells and remaining in them. This makes it a difficult disease to control because it can leave the cells, infect other cells and remain hidden for a very long time. When does this manifest? When the female or male canine suffers a moment of stress or immunosuppression, the bacteria is released and symptoms are produced. The Brucella canis usually establishes itself in the reproductive system, both in males and females, but it can also be found in the hemolymphatic system, bone marrow, the anterior uvea, meninges, and vertebral discs. In males, symptoms appear on a reproductive level, with inflammation of the testicles or becoming infertile due to the epididymitis produced. Problems in the joints can also arise. We have encountered uveitis, or corneal opacity problems, and in puppies who are born infected, the bacteria can lodge itself in the nervous system, causing problems not only in the joints, but in the nervous system. In females, the symptoms are strictly reproductive. These include spontaneous abortions as well as difficulty conceiving. Joint problems and corneal opacity can also be presented, but issues are usually reproductive. It is mainly transmitted through the digestive tract, through canine contact due to cohabitation, dogs that are living together, expelling and then consuming the bacteria. But another important method of transmission is sexual transmission, where reproductive services have some dogs that are infected mating with dogs that are healthy. Artificial inseminations from males from an unknown background, which can have semen infected with the bacteria. It can be transmitted through fromites, but it's unlikely. The main form of transmission is digestive and sexual. Since brucellosis is a zoonotic disease, the most vulnerable population for contagion are veterinarians, zootechnicians, inseminators, breeders, as well as any personnel that is in permanent contact with animals and their secretions, especially with waste from abortions or parturitions. For this reason, one must turn to a certified laboratory in case of suspecting transmission for specialized serological testing. In the initial symptomatic phase of the disease, the symptoms can seem similar to those of the flu, but eventually it can start affecting the joints as well as develop neurological and cardiac problems. In the case of men, testicular inflammation and possible reproductive problems can arise. In our country, there is a lack of knowledge of brucellosis in human beings. There are no regulations in breeding farms in order to prevent contagion between canines, and since the disease can be asymptomatic, generating no suspicion, no precautions are taken.
It is essential for livestock owners, canine breeders, and even pet owners to commit themselves to eradicating this bacterium in order to contribute to the preservation of both animal and human life in our country.